fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. In 1971, President Richard Nixon took the U.S. dollar off the gold standard, turning the U.S. dollar into fiat money, government money, fake money. In 2008, the world economy crashed when fake assets, fake mortgages, and fake financial experts led us down a path to ruin. Think about this. Why do schools choose not to teach us about money? Why are 78% of all Americans living paycheck to paycheck? Why are students staggering under a trillion dollars in student loan debt? Because a fake world makes the rich richer and the poor and middle class poorer, and that's exactly how the government wants it. The only way to protect yourself is to learn how to separate the real from the fake. Go to richdad.com to get your copy of Fake by Robert Kiyosaki and learn how to spot the manipulation of reality we live with every day. Don't get fooled again. Get your copy of Fake by Robert Kiyosaki at richdad.com. That's richdad.com. This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. We're talking today on the Rich Dad Radio Show. We'll be talking about the biggest revolution that, like it or not, even if you live nowhere, you're involved in this revolution and how it's going to affect you, what's happening today, and what's coming down the pike. And of course, we're talking about the revolution called cyber. The cyber world is upon us right now. It's going to affect all of us. It's affected many, many hundreds of millions of dollars of big corporations. It's going to affect you and me as little guys, if we're little guys, but we're in it right now. So we have a very important uh, guest today. His name is Rob Embers. He is a cybersecurity specialist. He speaks with a funny English accent because he is from England, but he's a CCO of Dionac. And he's going to be talking about what is happening in cybersecurity and the world because, as you know, like Facebook is in uh, hot water because they, they make more money from misinformation than anything else today. But also, you know, we have Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and people say, well, who's using us? Well, the criminals are. You know, the criminals use uh, crypto. And so the central banks of America, the Fed and then the, the ECB, European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan Bank, they're, they're trying to handle this thing called cyber, and it's coming at everybody from everywhere, but from nowhere. So this could possibly be the most important show you listen to. Now, the reason I have another special guest, he works for the Rich Dad Company, is Rob LeCount, and he's been with us for years too, but he is our cybersecurity specialist. Because if you were talking to me about it, I know nothing about what they're going to be talking about. So I'm going to kind of moderating discuss this discussion of what is happening today in the world of cyber. You know, why are people killing each other because they're so upset about this? How can they go and hack somebody and blow their business apart? what's going to happen in warfare, but also what's going to happen to you and me. So it's a very, very important program today. Again, our guests are Rob Embers. He's a C CEO of Dionac and Rob LeCount, who is our cybersecurity specialist here at the Rich Dad Company. So first of all, let's um, welcome Rob LeCount because he's coming. He's calling in on his phone also. Rich Dad's kind of a virtual company. Rob, have we had trouble with uh, cyber stuff inside the Rich Dad company? Oh, we, we've had tons of everything from people trying to penetrate our internal network, which happens probably a couple times a month, all the way to taking our entire email marketing system down for good. And, and so, Rob, yeah, Rob, you know that's not me because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I absolutely know who you <laughs> Uh, I actually know who it is. I did a bunch of research, and I actually found the hacker, and it was uh, it was it was an interesting experience. But um, it, it's it's terrifying, actually, as, as well, you know, because it's a lot of work, and you never know where these people are coming from, and you don't know what they took, and it's just it, it's it's really unsettling. And if I could say something a little bit, you know, at the risk of being politically incorrect in the world of the cyber world, I mean, Facebook today. If they take you, if they shut you down, you're shut down. Isn't that true? It's very true, especially. I mean, if you rely on their advertising platform or rely on them for any type of growth or messaging, they can they can take you out in a heartbeat. Yeah, and then we shut down. We shut down. 
Correct. And, you, and your business out, you're out of business in a, in a flash. You are. And there's no reason for it. They just shut you down. Yep. No so, explanation. You can't talk to a person. It's it's very frustrating when we deal with it frequently. Right. So our, our guest, you know, calling in from New York right now is Rob Embers, and he's a cybersecurity specialist. So Rob, Robert uh, Embers, so we've got three Robs on the phone today. We've got Rob Embers, Rob LeCount, and Robert Kiyosaki. So, Rob, please introduce yourself. You heard a little bit about how the Rich Dad Company is battling this, uh, your world of cybersecurity. Right. Well, thanks so much for having me on, first of all. Uh, and, you know, kind of, uh, if it comes with any consolation, you're not the only one that's struggling with this challenge. I think most organizations, large and small, uh, are facing attacks on a, on a near daily basis. Uh, you know, I think, you know, one of the things we try to encourage people to do is, is to stay one step ahead of the game as much as they can. Uh, and by doing that, sort of understanding more about their business and more about how technology is or how reliant they are on technology and which areas to secure. So obviously Robert you know, sort of alluded to uh, a couple of areas that, that you've faced attacks on, uh, probably quite common attacks, you know, where uh, you may have heard of the term phishing. Uh, well, you know, obviously getting your email database and posing as yourselves uh, to then send out spurious links to all of your contacts and, and, and beyond is a common way that organizations uh, face breaches. So, so, so. yeah, we're, we're in the, the business of trying to sort of advise people and make them aware of risk. And, and where possible, how to mitigate against that risk. Right. And, you know, my, my friend um, Jim Rickards wrote the book Currency Wars. And right. what you're saying is we're in a cyber war also, aren't we? Oh, we've been in a cyber war for a long time. I just think it's now making the news on a daily basis. Uh, you know, I mean, my, my news feed is filled with various attacks, various breach reports on, on a daily basis. Uh, not all the state sponsored. There's obviously the state sponsored side of things. Uh, but there's, you know, there's the opportunistic side of things. There's money to be made in this world. Uh, you know, from compromising organizations to allow them to, you know, generate enough processing power to generate Bitcoin, uh, compromise personal data, compromise staff data, compromise corporate uh, intellectual property. Uh, you know, there's, there's a multitude of, of ways in which people are being attacked. Right. So let me just say one more thing. I think with the currency wars, that's state-sponsored. I mean, that's, you know, China yeah. versus the U.S., they, they, they drop the yuan yeah. versus the dollar or the euro. And so it's, it's uh, state-sponsored. The trouble right. with cyber war is that it's not state-sponsored. It could be from multiple different countries, individuals. I mean, it's actually more dangerous than currency wars. Would you say that's true? Because they, they can't, these guys are all over the place. You can't find them. Absolutely. I mean, it's a borderless crime. I mean, you know, you can be sat nearly anywhere in the world, uh, and I'm sure Robert, from his investigation into those that attacked you guys, uh, you know, went on a few loops around to try and figure out you know, where these attacks originated from. You know, there's a lot of technology out there which makes you anonymous, you know, and, and that's not the organization, the hacking group, but literally you can hide be behind a number of virtual networks and make yourself very hard to track. And I think the challenge for a lot of organizations is the cost of investigating post-breach is so, so tremendously high that actually they don't, you know, which means these attackers feel like they're imperious and they can just do what they like. So, so Mr. LeCount, scary. What, what did you have to do to track down these guys that, that whatever they did to us, because, you know, I don't know anything what they did, but they did something. Well, initially, you know, we, we have a firewall, so we capture a lot of our inbound traffic. And at the time, we were actually hosting our own email service, and it's an open source platform, which, you know, as Rob can probably attest, a lot of times in itself can be a, a huge security nightmare. But um, I just did a lot of trace routing. Uh, used a bunch of just small tools to, to reverse engineer his IP and follow it all the way back. And I found he was in a small town in Albania, and <laughs> you you really can't do anything about it. Is that is that why you, know. is that why you bought that ticket to fly to Albania to punch him out or something? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, that took it took a lot of time. Rob, you can attest to the amount of time it takes to do this kind of research. And then at the Absolutely. end of it, you really can't do a whole lot about it. You know, I mean, it's, right. like you said, it's you're across the planet, and there's no real legal recourse. You didn't call the Scottsdale yeah. police go after him? No, no. I, I gave them a call, but they told me I'm just going to have to uh, go over and handle it myself. 
That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, um, I, mean, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that you know the law enforcement, you know, the, these these attacks are happening on such a frequent basis that they don't have resources to even begin to investigate. So I'm asking. So you know, most of our uh, listeners are like the Rich Dad Company. We're not we're not a big multinational corporation. We don't anyway, we're just fortunate to have guys like Rob LeCount and his team there to protect us. But this is my question to both Rob Ambers and Rob LeCount. What are they after? You know, if data is the new oil, what kind of data are they after? Why would they waste their time coming after us? What's valuable? Well, I think, Robert, if you don't mind, I can sort of try and answer this one. And, you know, please feel Absolutely. free to, to chip in with anything. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the things that we find uh, in the engagements that we have is if people have data that they're not really aware of the either value of. So, you know, obviously email addresses, uh, phone numbers are valuable to a point, but they're, they're in such great existence now that actually short of using them and, and cloning them to send out spurious emails to lure people into, into clicking on stuff, uh, you know, there's not a tremendous value. But when you start putting things together like uh, addresses, uh, maybe social security number, maybe payment card numbers for their credit cards that, you know, they subscribe to a service with, you know, I mean, one, find, one thing we find with, and not just in small businesses, but in all businesses, people's use of passwords are, is generally quite poor. Uh, you know, people have the same passwords across a number of different services. So if, if I compromise your organization and all of your listeners or all of your subscribers to your services have a password, now if they're using that same password in other services, now maybe they might have more interesting information in other services. So essentially, once you start building up a picture of people and, you know, if, if you, it's very easy to, to, to run a, a scan against Gmail or, you know, Hotmail or, and not, you know, any number of Facebook services. Okay, hopefully most people have got two-factor authentication switched on, which will sort of alert their phone that somebody's trying to break into their system. But again, not everybody does it. So, you know, first thing is wherever there's two-factor authentication, please use it because it's, it's free in most of these cases and will save you a lot of headaches. Well, let, me, let me ask, let me ask, ask Rob uh, LeCount this. Rob, what were they after from Rich Dad? Well, at, you know what's funny is that at that point, the, the person was actually programmatically sending emails to our database on our behalf. <laughs> and basically, this, this, is, this is what Rob was referring to earlier as phishing. But this is a lot more sophisticated because typically you, you can spoof or act like you're somebody else. And what you do is a phishing email, you send it out with a link, and that link might be to reset your Bank of America password or something like that. So this person was just sending out emails to our community on, on his own behalf, trying to steal information or deeper information from people within our community. From our base, our database. Exactly. I mean, I think something else to consider, you know, within those emails, there could well be a link which would direct the uh, receiver, you know, lure the receiver to click on the link, take them to a site which may sort of download in the background because you don't always see this happening in the fore, uh, some form of malware or some form of ransomware. You know, you, you, your listeners will be undoubtedly familiar with ransomware. You know, I think, it, again, happening way too frequently. Uh, but, of course, you know, that comes back to the Bitcoin thing. Uh, you know, why do people use Bitcoin? Well, it's a great way to, to, to use ransomware. Once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Radio Show. When we come back, we'll be talking more to Rob LeCount and Rob Embers. And, we're, you know, there's huge multinational corporations that are hacked, and they have very sophisticated people protecting them. Rich Dad's a relatively small company, but we are a global company, and we have customers from all over the world, so we're a pretty big target. So when we come back, I want, there's two things I want to ask is, what can the individual do? You know, so let's say you're a client of Rich Dad. I want you to know we're, we're doing our best to make sure nobody gets your numbers and your things like that, but it's a huge 24-7 project. So that's one question. What can the individual do just in case somebody does get through? But the other question is, what's the future? You know what I mean? These guys are just starting. And I know there's a lot of things, you know, the government of uh, England or Great Britain now wants to try and censor Facebook, or whatever they're trying to do. But these guys, these hackers, are much smarter, much faster, much more invisible, much more mobile than any government could ever protect you from. So when we come back, we're going to go into what can you do, but most importantly, what's the future look like? 
You're listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout. It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. What is your number one expense in life? Your number one expense. It's taxes. And I've asked the question is, how come there's no financial education in school, but why isn't there education on taxes either? You know, they tell you to save money, which is stupid. They tell you to invest in the stock market, which is stupid. But what they teach you about taxes? So here we have Rich Dad Advisor, Tom Wheelwright. We're talking about his revision for his book, Tax-Free Wealth. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Robert. So what's the tax-free wealth about? What What's different this time? It's a rev revised edition. Well, so what we did was, is we ha this is the first major tax reform we've had in 30 years, 2017. Right. It was 86 was the last one. 86 was the last one right. back when I was in Washington, D.C. So many guys got wiped out because of that tax change. <laughs> they did. They yeah. did. It wiped out an entire industry, savings and loans. This new tax law is just as big, but in a very different way. It affects different industries. You know, the tax law is always a series of incentives. And the question is always which incentives and which ones apply to me. And so the, the key to revising tax-free wealth was what is it, what changed so much in this new tax law that we can absolutely take advantage of, I mean, seriously, the amazing incentives. For example, I mean, the bonus depreciation, for example, for real estate is unbelievable. You buy a, a, a million dollar apartment, get a $300,000 reduction or more the very first year. So if you want to make more money and pay less taxes like Donald Trump and myself, get Tom's book, Tax-Free Wealth. It pays to listen. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today, like it or not, we're all in this revolution. No matter where you live in the world, we're in this re revolution called the cyber world. So we're discussing what can you do as an individual, can you do as an organization, but also what's coming, how you protect yourself and things like this. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android. Android, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason, as Rich Dad is an education company. And one of the best ways to learn is by repetition. So if you listen to this program one more time, you go to richdadradio.com, you download this program with Rob LeCount and Rob Embers and myself. You listen to it again, you'll, you'll pick up about 70% more than you've missed just listening to it once. But more importantly, have your friends, family, and business associates listen to it and discuss it. So when you listen to it and then listen to it with your friends, family, and business associates and discuss it, you'll get clearer on what the message of this Rich Dad Radio Show is about. And once again, our guest today is Rob Embers. He's, he's coming in from New York, but he's out of London, and he's a cybersecurity specialist. He's a CCO of Dionac, and they're a cybersecurity specialist. And his website is dionac.com. Let me spell it for you. It's D-I-O-N-A-C-H dot com. Very important person to get to know. And Rob LeCount, who represents the Rich Dad Company, because I know nothing about this world. So Rob LeCount is protecting myself, the Rich Dad Company, but more important, our very valued cu customers and clients like you because people are coming in on us to get after you. And one of the ways they get to you is they have fake Robert Kiyosaki's and fake Kim Kiyosaki's. Man, I can understand faking Kim, but to fake me, you gotta be pretty desperate. Oh God, I can't believe it. But anyway, so Mr. LeCount, what's happening? How, how does a fake Robert Kiyosaki work? 
Well, it's uh, it's actually oddly simple. Um, the, the things that we've been really seeing lately are people you targeting our followers on both Instagram and LinkedIn. And essentially, they just take some pictures they found on either our page or our website or just the Internet, and then they completely put together a fake profile of themselves. And then what they do is they go through the Rich Dad community on Instagram or, or LinkedIn, and they find people that are connected to us. And they start to direct message them as if they're Robert saying, you know, either they'll come speak with them or they'll do reviews of their books. And then they'll start this offline conversation using stuff like the uh, line app or telegram. And then they'll have these side discussions and they'll, they'll sometimes bring in a fake Kim and they actually do a really good job. I actually had my wife uh, toy with one of these people one day just to see how far they would go. Um, and they just use all these tools and they create this little scam where they don't actually have to directly communicate with the person. Or if they do, they'll get on a Skype call, but for some reason their, you know, their camera doesn't work or it's really fuzzy. It, it's actually sort of scary that, that they're targeting our, our members and our followers. And um, I just think it's really important for people to know who they're really talking to. So, so what happens, Rob, if, if you're one of our listeners and – one of our loyal fans out there of Rich Dad, if they suspect something, how do they, do they contact you? They contact Rich Dad, or what do they do? The best thing to do would be send an email to customer service at richdad.com and just let us know that they, they've seen something. And always look for badges that validate the, the account to prove that it is you. As you've seen, like to validate you on Instagram and LinkedIn, Robert, we've had to send pictures of you with your driver's license. So we're a, a verified <laughs> account. If you're not dealing with a verified account, don't deal with them. Can I, I tell you a horrifying story? This woman called me from Japan and says, where are you? And I went, what do you mean, where am I? And she, I don't know how she got my phone number. She says, you're supposed to be here today. I went, in Tokyo? She goes, yeah. I said, I never made that agreement. She says, so apparently somebody scammed her from some European country that I would be there. I said, well, I don't live in Europe. And he got her for 65000 bucks, saying I would speak at her event. I'm going, exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going, how in the world can you be so stupid? I don't live in Lithuania or something. But anyway, you know what I mean? That's what's going on in the world. Mr. Rob Embers, again, he's a CCO of Dionac. What do you have to say about what we just talked about? What's your two bits on that one? It never fails to amaze me that, that unfortunately people fall for these things. You know, I suppose... A little bit of cynicism is not goes a long way in this world, uh, you know. And as Robert said, you know, look for verification. Uh, you know, there's an old adage: if something looks to be too good to be true, it probably is. So, yeah, sixty-five thousand yeah, for a speaking engagement is pretty low for me. <laughs> right. <Anyway. laughs> not really. But no, I think, yeah, I think encouraging or employing more vigilance in the the way in which you engage with people online is never going to go amiss. Okay. Uh, you know, we always encourage people to look at the tone of emails and communication. Obviously, try to assure us from a verified source. Uh, you know, if it's in an email uh, and there's a link to, to something, we'll try to verify whether that link matches the sender's email. Uh, obviously, a lot harder in social media. But then, you know, as I say, if, it's, if it looks too good to be true, it could well be. So cynicism and vigilance, I think, is probably, a, you know, two words that I certainly try to employ when I'm looking at things online. So, Rob, let me ask Rob Ambrose, as a CCO of Dionac, what services do you provide? Well, essentially, we'll go into organizations and help them understand risk, help them understand informational assets, uh, really to, to sort of look at technology, look at how they use technology, and try to understand those areas of vulnerability, those areas that are likely to be more targeted by attackers, uh, you know, either, you know, in all sides of organization. You know, it's years ago, you know, the, the world has changed. Everybody does everything online now. But typically, if you go back 30 years and you were going to start a business in the retail outlet, you know, you'd open a store. The first thing you'd probably do is get yourself an alarm connected to the local police station, right? Well, you can spin up a store tomorrow, you know, using everything online. You know, people don't think of security anymore. You know, they go and buy a safe, but they don't think about having a safe now because they don't need it. But actually, you know, there's a lot of things that probably listeners of yours that may have online stores, you know, ensuring that you're actually capturing the right details. You're not capturing more than you need. Uh, so we'll help organizations understand things like that, understand risk, 
and essentially perform the role of a hacker. You know, we will try to break in, we will try to compromise them, we will try to extract information that we shouldn't be able to do. We'll even try and get their websites to do stuff and give us information or, you know, maybe let us check out for with goods for zero. You know, we've done all this stuff. So uh, you would so you would come into an organization like Rich Dad and you would talk to Rob LeCount and say, I'm gonna be on the other side. Right. Yeah, we, we would come in and we would we would, would create an engagement with an organization and come in on an offensive way. So look to exploit as many vulnerabilities as we can find, depending on the environment or the application, and then essentially report back to the organization, this is what we've managed to do, this is the way in which we've managed to perpetrate this, and more importantly, this is what you would need to do as an organization to mitigate that and to ensure that nobody else could actually do that in the way that we've done it. So, you know, obviously a, a company like, let's say, Bank of America could, could afford your services. Right. How how much, I mean, how how small can you go? I mean, how, do you yeah. know I mean, how, I mean, how much, think, you know, like, like we have a life lock in the States here, which is your right. identity theft. And they mass, they mass market that to the masses out there. But what size organization could hire somebody like Dionec? Yeah, I mean, we work with organizations, you know, multi-million dollar organizations employing hundreds of thousands of people down to organizations that, you know, may have, you know, 10, 20 employees. Uh, you know, I think depending on what an organization is looking to do, you know, you, you can actually have an understanding and probably start to implement some good fixes, you know, for five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, which seems a lot, but... You know, the cost of losing information, the oh, downtime that organizations face, and, you know, obviously now you know, global organizations have to report. Uh, anybody capturing, you know, data from European, for example, have a European requirement to report data. So I think the cost when you start mounting all of that up, to understand it in advance, you know, prevention is often cheaper than the cure. Correct. Rob, what are we doing? We are, it's actually funny you ask. Uh, we actually... Uh, engaged with a company very uh, similar to Rob's about 10 years ago because we had to become PCI compliant when we were storing data. What's PCI? And they their, PCI is payment. Oh, Rob, what, what, what is this? Yeah, uh, it's a, it's, so, yeah, it's a payment card industry. It's essentially the five leading card brands have got together and have set a number of data security standards for any organization that transmits, processes, or stores credit card data. There's a number of requirements that each organization have to adhere to. The merchant, sorry, the acquiring banks, whilst they're very good at dishing out uh, merchant accounts, are not always very good at making the merchants understand that their requirements in terms of becoming compliant. So in the event of a breach, uh, you know, Visa and MasterCard are extremely good and you know, we've seen this happen with organizations where they can pinpoint where the fraud has actually taken place. Good. Hey, now, we're, we're running out of time, but I've got a very important question. You know, today we have gov governments in Europe are trying to regulate Facebook and Google. I want comments uh, from both you guys, Rob LeCount and Rob members. What's your idea of the government trying to protect us? <laughs> Mr. LeCount, yeah. what do you think about that? I... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's no secret that I actually stopped using Facebook uh, January of last year. Unless it's business-related, I don't use it personally anymore just because the amount of data that, and the way that data is used and sold, and, and I just, I'm not comfortable with it myself. So I actually welcome the government to step in and try and regulate it. I just don't see how they're going to be able to do it. So you're, you're kind of doubtful on their ability. I'm I'm very doubtful. I'm just doubtful because of the power and the amount of data that Facebook already has and the amount of people that use it that I don't feel like the government will be effective. Do you think the hackers are smarter than the government? Definitely. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Embers, what do you think about the government trying to regulate all this? I, I'd agree a lot with Robert. I mean, I think it, it, it's a tall order for them to do it. You know, I think for me it comes back to a, personal, a person's uh, ability to make a decision as to what they want to expose, right? Because ultimately it comes down to what information am I happy to lose, right? If I'm not happy to lose certain information, then I shouldn't be posting it in certain areas. That's, right? that's like a lizard's willing to lose its tail because you can regrow it, huh? <laughs> right. You know, so, so but I think just, you, but yeah, uh, I think, this is my question for the two of you guys, you know, because I look at the young guys over there. You know, inside, you know, inside Rich Dad, these guys wearing Bitcoin shirts and all of this, they're all revolutionaries. Do you know what I mean? They, 
you know, to me, Bitcoin is an attack on the central bank, the Fed and the European Central Bank and all that. They're threatening the hegemony hegemony of the central bank system. That's what Bitcoin's doing, or cyber cyber currencies. But there's so many young guys right now who just want to take it on, and I think they're smarter than the government. Any comments on that, Mr. LeCount? I would say that they are definitely more nimble. They're less nimble. regulated, nimble, yeah. and less. They're they're basically less controlled than anybody in the government. So they have more freedom to do the things they want to do. I don't know if I would overall say that they're completely smarter than them. They're just more capable. I guess is the best way to put it. And it's, it's too expensive to track them, isn't it? Would that say that's too true? expensive? It's insane because like like. Like Robert said earlier, to become anonymous on the web, I mean, you probably see these commercials all the time for these VPNs and things like that that you can have on your phone to browse anonymously. Imagine the tools hackers have available and the tools that they can build on their own. Mr. Mr. Embers, what do you say about all this? I mean, what's Yeah, I, I, again, I'd agree. I mean, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's some very smart people, you know, in, in central governments, you know, in the United Kingdom, the United States. You know, I think it's... You know, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the background, you know, in the commercial world. Uh, I think the one advantage that, or the disadvantage that governments face is the time and, you know... The sheer numbers. The sheer numbers of these guys. There's billions of them. I think that's it. And and the money to be made is, you know, you're going to invest. If if you're that way inclined, you are going to invest time because there is money to be made in that world. Now, you know, I think... Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. But, of course, you know, cryptocurrencies require crypto mining, uh, you know, and if if we can, if a lot of organizations can lock down their defenses to prevent people hijacking their systems for mining, then, you know, it, it's a small thing, but it helps. So I'm a final, it's a little final questions, I mean, final comments from both Rob LeCount and Rob Embers. So let's say I, I'm, I have my little uh, Amazon account. How safe is that? You know, I'm selling stuff on Amazon or eBay, whatever you're doing. How safe is that? Well, you actually are selling on Amazon, and your account is extremely safe. Um, again, like Robin mentioned earlier, I am a firm believer in two-factor authentication, strong, long, complicated passwords and password variability. I will tell you that our Amazon account is completely locked down, and I monitor it on a daily basis, so I know that nobody is getting in and, and, and doing anything with ours. And companies like Amazon are pretty good about protecting that stuff because that's that's really their their revenue stream. I mean, if people were to get in and start hacking their sellers, they, their platform would collapse and people would be going back to, you know, Kmart. Mr. Embers, what do you have to say about all this stuff? I mean, how does a little guy selling a couple of things on eBay and Amazon or whatever they do today? What are they, Again, how- come back to the vigilant thing. Uh, make sure you're using all of the tools that are there, you know. Organizations like Amazon, you know, that they make these tools available for people to make them more secure. So if there's a tool available that allows you to firm up your account and, you know, maybe only use it for one device, you know, again, why would I need to log in from multiple devices? And if I do, then I should have them registered and available, you know. So I think, you know, look at some of the tools that are available and use them because they're there for your protection. Well, Mr. Rob Embers, I really want to thank you. Once again, you're the cybersecurity specialist. You're the CCO of Dionac. Your website is dionac.com. And I thank you for your contribution to the Rich Dad Radio Show. My pleasure. Thanks thank for having you. me on. And Rob LeCount, has, uh, he's going to graciously stay on, and we're going to answer your personal questions from Ask Robert. You're listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout. It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. 
That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. Financial freedom begins with financial education. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, I want to thank uh, Rob Embers. He's a CCO of Dionac, and his, his company is Dionac.com, D-I-O-N-A-C-H. And Rob LeCount went through his, uh, he looks good, and he's worth, worth uh, going to his website, Dionac.com. And you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because we're an education company. We do not sell things or do deals with people. I want you to hear that because there's a lot of fake Robert and Kims out there, which is ridiculous. So anyway, you can go to richdadradio.com. You can listen to this podcast one more time. You'll learn 70% more than you heard the first time. But most importantly, sit down with friends, family, and especially business associates your eBay partner or whatever you got, you know, and discuss this because we live in a different world today and it's a world we cannot see. So please go richdadradio.com and listen to this podcast one more time and come up to speed as what's going on. And now we're going to the most popular part of our program, which is Ask Robert, where you get to ask me a question. You can submit your questions to Ask Robert at richdadradio.com. So Tony, what's the first question? Our first question comes from John in Massachusetts. His favorite book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He writes, Robert, you say news is fake and teachers are fake. If so, where do you obtain your information? That's a very good question because that's a good, thanks for the promo of my latest book, Fake. That's the reason I wrote it, so you can answer those questions yourself. Uh, It's a very big, big thing, this fake, you know? So in my book, Fake, which just came out, please read it. Right. I did, it was a tough book to write two and a half years because I had to keep it as simple as possible. So the three fakes we have today is fake money, the U.S. dollar and the euro and the yen and the peso and the yuan. They're fake. I don't know why anybody works for that stuff. If you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I said the rich don't work for money because it's fake. And fake money makes the poor and middle class poor. That's the really tragic thing about it because money today is a combination of debt and taxes but the government will never tell you that. The second fake are fake teachers. Look, the most important piece of real estate is at approximately six inches between your left ear and your right ear. If you let fake people put data into your brain, which is a lot of what this program today is about, then you're screwed up because your brain could be, in some cases, your biggest asset, but for most people, their brain is their biggest liability. And so that's why in my book, Fake, I wrote about the importance of having real teachers, not fake teachers. And most school teachers are good people, but they're not rich people. So they're putting fake ideas about money in your head, going back to fake money. And the third is fake, are fake assets. You know, if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad again, I said your house is not an asset, and every real estate agent stopped sending me Christmas cards after that one. But look, Wall Street is selling you the worst assets possible because if you understand the definition of an asset, an asset is supposed to put money in your pocket. Most people who are investing in the stock market, the money is coming out of their pocket through these 401ks, superannuations, RRSPs. They're just sucking cash out of your pocket and putting into these fake assets called stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and savings. So that's why I wrote the book, Fake. So I'm not gonna answer that question in one second or five minutes, but the book Fake is out right now. If you're really interested, please read it. Because most of what we're dealing with today is fake. So you gotta be careful who you talk to, listen to, and who teaches you. And what kind of assets are you buying and who are you buying your assets from? And that's really what we're talking about in today's show. So the next thing here is this. There's a lot of fake Robert Kiyosakis out there, a lot of fake Kim Kiyosakis, and which is, again, the question, how do you know as to real me? First of all, I don't sell assets. I don't recommend investments. I don't do deals with people. I am a very private insider. And you see, understand, ladies and gentlemen, the press will tell you that insider trading is illegal. That's BS. All trading is inside. It's how close to the inside are you? You know, when you buy a mutual fund, you can do it. You can have insider trading illegally, but it can also be done legally. But they'll never tell you that. 
So I do primarily insider trading, investing, but I only do it with a few people. So I don't do deals outside of my very close friends who I trust and uh, with all my heart and soul. So if I can pass that information on to you today when you're talking about cybersecurity, well, you also got to have personal financial advisor sur surveys because most financial planners are fake teachers. They have only one thing in mind, to sell you something. And, they, you know, we all sell something, but they're not very smart people, but, you know, financially. They, they've been taught how to sell mutual funds and ETFs and that stuff. And that's good stuff, but you very seldom going to get rich from that, especially if the market crashes. So before we go, before we complete, I want to ask Rob LeCount to talk about, you know, all these fake Kiyosakis out there and f fake Robert and Kims. I mean, what the hell's going on? Well, uh, what the hell's going on is people uh, are predators. They see an easy way to make a buck, and they can leverage somebody as important as you and Kim. And, and, and to be honest with you, they could leverage really anybody at the Rich Dad Company. And I just think it's... It's extremely important to not only make sure you're only following verified accounts through social media or emails are always going to come from the Rich Dad Company. Just be very vigilant, like we said on the show, and just know that nobody, not one person at the Rich Dad Company, including Robert and Kim, will ever, ever engage in personal deals with any of our community members. It just won't happen. So please protect yourself and be aware that we will not encounter any of those situations. So that, that's very, very important because, you know, this makes me nauseous. I mean, it actually makes me nauseous. Please get the book fake. If you're really interested, you know, we, we know there's fake news. Every time I watch either Fox News or CNN today with these all these characters running against President Trump, I don't have to watch the Jerry Springer show anymore. We got more goofballs and include Trump in that one also. <laughs> In politics today, and politics is a nasty game, but it's gotten to be a, just a Jerry Springer show, or it's just the goofiest thing I've ever seen. You know, I mean, I can't believe what I see on television and who's running for office. It's just a sideshow. It's worse than reality TV. It's worse than Trump's Apprentice. These guys are all apprentices, and I tell you, it's a joke. It is a standing joke. So if you believe anybody was a politician, I mean, you got to be, you know, you got to be smoking the wrong stuff. So anyway, that's what I have to say. Most of it is fake. The best way to succeed today is check your sources. Please read my book, Fake, Fake Money, Fake Teachers, Fake Assets. You know, 90% of the teachers, well, no, maybe 80% of the teachers are good people. You know, 20% are fake. But that's, you know, we've all had great teachers and bad teachers and teachers who are only there for the paycheck or for the pension. They're fake. You know what I mean? Just call a spade a spade or fake a fake. So once again, I thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. I talk, I thank Rob Ambrose, especially when I thank Rob LeCount for covering my back because I can't believe the number of people that want to imitate myself or Kim. It's just amazing. And remember, we don't sell deals and I do not do deals with listeners. Everything is inside. I'm very, very tight on who I do a deal with. These are people I've done deals with for years and years and years. And I trust them implicitly. I ask you to do the same thing. You know, financial planner comes up to you, ask them to show them, ask the financial planner, show me your financials. If they're not a rich person, don't listen to them. Please be a little bit more vigilant. So once again, thanks to Rob Embers and Rob LeCount. You can submit your questions, and thanks you for listening. You can submit your questions to Ask Robert at richdadradio.com. And go out there and have a great time in a world of fake and make sure who you're dealing with is real. Thank you.